Welcome to ESD School, brought to you by Attract. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the video. Dear all, thank you very much to be with us for this uh, second uh, episode uh, about incision uh, in ESD. Now uh, the aim will be to, to cut the mucosa and enter into the submucosa and we will try uh, to show you many tips and tricks to improve your skills to do this important step uh, for ESD. So, as uh, previously shown, uh, we will cover all these things in the ESD school uh, by attract uh, uh, chain. All the gray parts are the one you can already find on the, the YouTube chain. And uh, today we will discuss about the incision, which is uh, one part of the theory uh, for this crucial step uh, of ESD. So today uh, we will uh, describe all these points in the schedule of the session today. First, theory. As you know, it is an evidence, but uh, very important to to think about you should reach the submucosal space with your incision it means that your incision should be at the good depth and should stay at the same as at the same good depth second point we will discuss of many uh, technical aspects and we will also discuss on the particular situations because your incision will be uh, done thinking about your strategy on how my incision will facilitate my strategy for this lesion. So for every lesion, you should have a strategy from the beginning and you should do your incision in order to serve this uh, strategy. We will discuss quickly about the devices. Some training exercises will be uh, given and we will uh, show some examples which are quite particular. So first, uh, the theory, which is very important. And the first point is that to get a good incision in the submucosal space, you should first do a good injection in order to have a cushion that will be easy to cut without risk to touch the muscle from the incision itself. Injection is really a key point to do your incision and to um, serve your incision. So please go back to the first episode uh, to master this crucial step, uh, which is also a lot of tips and tricks, not only for ESD, but also for the different techniques that uh, use injection. Second point now, you want to reach the submucosa. It means that the tip of the needle when you use a needle type knife will be in the submucosa. For example, in the colon with a 1.5 millimeter needle, you want to have an incision of 1.5 millimeter, not less or not more. It means you don't want to touch the muscle from the beginning and you don't want to cut very uh, superficially shallow incision because you will see there are a lot of problems due to this. And the best way to get this good uh, uh, incision at the good depth is probably uh, to have a good injection first and after to make a small pressure on the mucosa, a small pressure that does a small cup around the tip of your knife. And once you will do your cutting um, a pedal uh, push, the needle will enter, but the ceramic will stop on the mucosa. And thanks to this, you will have this entrance of 1.5 millimeter in the submucosa without pushing too much. And um, in fact, reducing the space in between the mucosa and the muscle that could be damaged by a, a, a very strong pressure. So first trick, which is um, for me very important, uh, I brought back it from Japan and from Professor Yagi, is the small hole to check 
the depth of your incision. In fact, the best way to do all your incision in the submucosa is to be sure you are in the submucosa. And for this, you can check by doing a small hole like this. You remove your knife and you control that you get a blue color at the center of your target, which means that you are um, into the submucosa. Here we have a lesion. We will do a small hole like this, staying perpendicular. We check that there is blue at the bottom. And after we will move from this point. And thanks to this, you will have an incision which stay in the blue. If you begin to move without reaching the blue layer, you will have um, an incision which is not at the good depth. So second example, you can also check that you are at the good depth by injecting into. And if you have blue layer, you go back into and you move from this point. Thanks to these small tips, you will do your all, put your the, the tip of your knife into the submucosa, control that the depth is good, and then move from this point uh, to do your incision. That makes your in incision at the good depth and uh, always at the same depth also. So you do your all, you enter, and then you move, and you will have an incision which is always in the blue and not an You will see here a second, a second example, uh, but um, with the experience, you don't have to check that you are at the good depth. You just enter, inject, you're sure you are in the blue layer, and then you can move from it. So with the experience, checking the blue is not necessary. But doing the small dot and feeling that you have passed uh, the uh, submucosa uh, is very important. You see it, yep. you know that you are in the good depth because you have um, felt that there is a kind of uh, uh, movement that passed through the muscularis mucosa. So you don't have to check it's blue, but you will feel that with the small dot, you have entered the good layer. Um, another point which is important and linked to injection is that if the mucosa is injected without pressure, you will have a, a relatively thick mucosa and muscularis mucosa. If you inject with strength, asking to the nurse to inject very, very strongly, uh, you will have something which is really more stretch and therefore it makes the mucosa thinner. And if the mucosa is thinner, your uh, cut with the knife will be deeper uh, because um, you have uh, stretched the mucosa. And it is always uh, easier to cut something which is stretched, like with scissors. You can see here it's not deep enough. And here, uh, because the mucosa is stretched, you will have a more depth um, incision, which on the left doesn't reach uh, the submucosa and on the right it is better it is deeper uh, you uh, thanks to the stretching of the mucosa you can uh, enter more easily to the submucosal space so injecting with pressure reduce the thickness of the mucosa and make it easier to uh, enter and to cut Another point is that if you work with the knife very far from you, you have no strength and you cannot stretch the mucosa. It works, but it's not so precise and not really uh, deep, uh, deep and controlled. But if you use your cap as a stretcher on the mucosa, you, you, you slide in the mucosa to stretch it, you see that it's exactly like sizers when you stretch uh, the paper it's easier to cut with a sizer. If you stretch the mucosa thanks to your cap, uh, it will be really easier to cut it properly and deeply because uh, you are stretching the two sides of your incision, enlarging the space, and uh, your incision is really more effective.
after uh, it is also important to uh, to understand that uh, if you do an incision with the knife perfectly perpendicular to the mucosa your incision will be relatively uh, thin but if you do a kind of movement of stretching with the knife sliding on the side you will have something more uh, large and then uh, a better access to the submucosa so i try to show you here um, you always uh, try to to do a, an angle to pucker to fold the mucosa uh, with the cap and with the knife and therefore you will have a double movement an incision but also a trimming because you also cut the first fiber of the submucosa and then the space is larger uh, and the access to submucosa will be easier uh, after another point is that when you inject uh, and you cut without really entering into the submucosa you will you have a risk of uh, doing a very shallow incision uh, and the problem of this shallow incision is that uh, the access to the submucosa is not very good and second point you have a lot a lot of very small vessels that are easily oozing so cutting deeper uh, will help you to have less vessels but bigger so you will have to manage large vessels but very rarely if you cut very shallow you will have a lot of oozing because you will cut a lot of small vessels so uh, if you want to be effective it's better to try to do your all at the good depth and move from this one you will um, meet less vessels but a little bigger Another point which is linked to injection is that uh, it is difficult to cut into a valley uh, and you should in fact remove the valley to stretch again the mucosa and be um, effective when you will cut. So in a valley it's difficult to do a good incision at the same depth. If you change the valley to uh, make uh, a kind of mountain you will be more effective and the second way to do it is to do it with the knife uh, you you come close to the valley inject change the shape to do something which is stretch and then go back to your incision there is still a small valley but uh, you will keep a good axis because you have changed the shape and uh, remove uh, the deep um, part of the the valley this uh, valley was probably done uh, by a vessel because you see we have we have a bleeding sometimes you have fibrosis or something that stays uh, the valley but you should unfold this area to be effective so it is better to have uh, uh, an incision in the submucosa and to stay all the time in the submucosa and for this uh, it's better to uh, have a continuous uh, incision uh, with an homogeneous depth and uh, it's uh, it's always better uh, to try to do it without um, <coughs> uh, stop uh, with normal mucosa because if you have stops uh, you will have to come back and come back and come back so um, your aim is to have a continuous uh, incision if you are not sure of the position of the lesion you should go back and um, control that your axis is okay but if uh, you know exactly where is the lesion and you are quite sure of your uh, axis you can check and uh, follow your incision by doing it circumferentially it is your strategy when you want to use traction do your circumferential incision first slowly adapting yourself doing small incision and uh, the sum of this small uh, straight incision will try to do a round shape and will try to join uh, the, the initial part of your incision don't stop without passing really into your over incision because if you stop just before the elasticity of the mucosa uh, will remain a small bridge but if you continue and go to the opposite side you will have 
a circumferential incision all around uh, the lesion, which is quite homogeneous. I mean, at the good depth uh, everywhere. So it is an important point. If you do an incision without uh, a continuous uh, depth, the, the problem is that you have a lot of leakage and it's sometimes difficult to uh, do a mucosal cushion in the area you have not cut very well. And you see, you cannot push uh, so much because there is no water under this area. And then, uh, even if you push, uh, you will have uh, an incision which is um, less depth, uh, less deep, sorry, and therefore less effective uh, for uh, continuing your procedure. Uh, another way to have a good incision is to continue a good incision. I mean, if you have done one part, you go back in the edge of this incision and begin again, inject again and begin again to do your incision, stop, inject again. And in fact, you have a, an, a discontinuous incision, but uh, staying at the same depth because you always your use your precedent injection incision to uh, follow uh, the wool shape of your incision. So it is also a good way. The small dot when you begin and after uh, go back from every edge of your incision and continue to do it at the same depth. Like this. So second point, the technical aspect, and I will try to give you some tips and tricks that are important for me. The first, uh, I think is, that is very important, is that if you do a round shape around your lesion, all the retraction vector will go to the center of the lesion, and on the opposite, the edges will retract oppositely. Therefore, you will open the space. But if you do an incision which is not round, the vectors will go everywhere. And in fact, you will not have a, a perfect shape that concentrate to the center and that open the submucosa. So uh, I think that uh, you should target a round shape like this. Uh, this was a, a lesion which, uh, which was a suspect of deep uh, invasion, but it's not the, the problem here. We will stop the procedure after the incision. In fact, it was an intermuscular uh, uh, resection. But if you have a round shape like this, almost round, everything retracts to the center. On the opposite, if you do a, an artistic shape like one of our assistants, uh, uh, like this, you will see it's very, very beautiful, but <laughs> the space uh, is not opening in fact you have a lot of bridges a lot of vectors that retract on the right on the left and finally the space is not open on, in the same idea when you want to go into the submucosa you should target a smile shape uh, or a whale uh, mouth shape here i have a six hour uh, channel scope so i will do a smile but in two parts. I begin at the center, do my first incision on the right. The maneuverability of the scope was not very good here, so I have to go slowly because the scope is moving. I cannot be fixed on the mucosa. So first I do the right part of my smile and then the left part of my smile. This is only the incision, but soon, I will do my trimming. We will see an episode on trimming later, but here it's important to show it. The smile is okay, the shape is okay, but it's not open. And when I want to open the smile and the mouth, I will do my trimming and open the space. And you can see that this shape of smile is welcoming you to go into the submucosa. So it is very important to imagine that the best way to enter in the submucosa is to do a mouth that will help you to enter. And probably the good uh, thing you should have in mind is do your incision like a smile and open it uh, with your trimming 
to have a large smile uh, with a mouth that will make you uh, enter into the submucosa. One important technical point is that uh, to get a round shape, you should control your trajectory. It is very important to um, have precise and regular movement in order to avoid running off road. If you push continuously on the pedal, on the accelerator, you can have uh, an accident. But if you do an intermittent, in an intermittent adjusted and rhythmic pressure, you will have time to um, relax, to control your trajectory. And finally, you want to get a round shape by doing small linear incision. It's very difficult to do a round shape incision because uh, the electric generator will give you small pike, spikes. So in fact, you will do an incision, which is right, linear, but the sum of the linear will do a round shape. One very important point, uh, point in the underlined by Jeremy uh, in Limoges is that uh, if you want to be effective, the best way is to have the needle of the knife always targeting the center of the lesion, because at the same time you will cut, but also do an in, an, an, a dissection, a trimming in the axis of what you want to dissect. So your goal is not to do a, a line, is to do something with um, a movement with the scope and the knife always targeting the center of the lesion, like this. And this movement is far from easy. Uh, it's not a linear uh, movement with uh, the lateral uh, rows of your scope. It's a combination of torquing up uh, like this. You will, in fact, cross uh, your hands uh, to try to always have the, the, the knife targeting the center of the lesion, turning um, and trying to stay always tangential to uh, the axis of the muscle. So uh, it is a, di a difficult movement, but one good exercise is to do something uh, at the lab, for example, with this kind of drawing and try with your scope to do this kind of movement, uh, a balance that stays always oriented to the center of the lesion. Sliding is very important in ESD and what you are, is, you are targeting is to keep the ceramic at the surface of the mucosa but with the needle at the good depth in the submucosa. Uh, so you want to slide. And to slide, uh, the best way is to fix the depth with the tip of the electrode and after to put the ceramic at the surface and slide smoothly using the ceramic as a board and the knife, uh, the electrode, as the cutter under the board. And it is really a pleasant part of ESD when you can slide like this. Uh, and because you are sliding with the same pressure at the surface, your incision will stay at the same depth. One very important point um, for the technical aspect is to consider the channel axis of your endoscope to choose your strategy. Because if you have the left side, uh, I mean a uh, um, seven or eight o'clock channel, uh, you have a blind area on the left. So in fact, you will go from the left to the right and you will have to adjust uh, your strategy to this. If um, you have a six o'clock channel, you can go to the left or to the right because your only blind area is um, uh, on the lower uh, corner uh, on in the right and therefore the only area where you don't want to go is there but it is tracting so in fact uh, you will never use so much and you will go uh, from the, the the bottom to the upper part or from the right to the left but you can adjust uh, yourself um, Depending on this axis, uh, you will choose your strategy to always go to 
visible area without uh, the blind area. Uh, it means that uh, uh, here with a quite a six o'clock channel, you can go all the right incision, uh, all the, the part which is uh, uh, at the upper part and from the left to the right to do uh, the other side. Um, when you have a seven o'clock channel, you should go to the left in order to have uh, to avoid blind areas and you will do all your way to the right and then all the way uh, from the left to the right and you will just have to do uh, from the left lower corner to uh, your incision at the uh, upper uh, left corner in order to always push and avoid traction and le the last example probably and the last example is um, when you have a linear shape lesion you can do in two parts uh, with a six o'clock channel from the bottom to the upper side doing this curve on the left and then the same on the right uh, you have an example here uh, for a second lesion uh, which was a, a, a small scar uh, after piecemeal EMR with uh, intramucosal adenocarcinoma the multidisciplinary team discussion said uh, we should uh, do a systematic revision of the scar to be sure there is no residual uh, um, adenocarcinoma so we did a small ESD of the of the remaining uh, scar and we did this strategy because it was a linear shape uh, area and we did uh, like this uh, on the bottom from the bottom to the left to the upper uh, edge and when we reach the more oral side we go to the to the upper edge it is still uh, feasible to go here because we see well and here we will do the second area but when we begin to tract it's better to go back to your smile and do the same thing on the right uh, because you are always pushing and you reduce the risk of perforation because you have no traction movement um, and as we already said uh, pushing is safer than tracting and with this uh, you will have a strategy that always push without any movement to the blind area which is uh, at the lower right part because your channel is at six so tracting to six is an, a blind area which is really difficult to dissect and dangerous also doing it by pushing to join by the two uh, uh, side is really uh, helpful another point which is relatively important um, and it is a current mistake for the the trainees is that um, because you are afraid of the time of your procedure you want to take small margins but in fact uh, under the lesion you have a density of vessels which increase uh, in the lesion because you have more cells to to feed uh, at the center of the lesion than in the periphery so in fact you have a, a density of vessel which is very red at the center and which goes down in the in the periphery of the lesion so in fact if you want to have a, an easy access to the submucosa with low density of vessels you should take margins because if you do very close you will have a lot of vessels very quickly if you take more margins it will be easier uh, because the number of vessels which be uh, lower so in fact taking large margins is a more an easy point than, uh, than a loss of time. And we will see for other reasons that it is also very important. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your colleagues. Until next time, this is ESD School by Attract.